to talk about a, just something else besides basketball here for a little bit, and then we're going to get into um, some stuff for tonight because obviously we didn't have a practice, we were going to prep, so you're going to have to talk it out. We're going to show you some things, and then we'll walk through it. Okay, we can't practice fully, but we'll walk through it. I sent you this uh, the other day. Hopefully, you took two seconds to to read through it. Facing a challenge, remember you got to keep overcoming it. You got to keep pushing through it. You can't stop uh, because if you just give up, if you say, "Well, we lost the close one, things weren't going our way," coach keeps getting is, is still getting on us, then you're never going to succeed. You're never going to be able to take that next step. Okay, you have to keep going. You have to. We still have a lot to play for. One of our goals is to be, uh, and like I told you, one of our goals is to be in the final four. Saturday, February 9th, that's the last day of the year. That's the last day of our season. There'll be four teams playing in the loser's bracket. There'll be four teams playing in the winner's bracket for the final four of the NLC tournament. Four. I'd like for us to be in the final four. Sorry. That, that is one of our team goals, to be playing on that last Saturday of the year in the final four. If we're there, then hey, you know what? We'll, we'll play all we got. We'll do everything we can to try to win it. But let's make sure we're there. You know, we, we can't win the, the tournament if we're not there. So that is a reoccurring goal in my head that even though we have our struggles, it means more to me that we keep pursuing our final goal, our end destination of let's get to that Saturday. That make that your goal. Whenever it's a tough time, whenever we've been getting on you, you've had a bad practice, you had a bad drill, remember. Remember what that ultimate goal is, the, the process we're trying to get to, is being able to play on February 9th in that final four. That, that's, that's the goal. That is the goal. So don't stop, keep pushing. The other thing I want to show you um, before we get you know, LTV, I want you to listen to what Coach Buzz Williams had to say about his developing guys. I think it's multiple people who have a role in developing guys. But maybe one thing that's not spoken enough when guys make jumps are their willingness to do it over and over and over. Uh, we had shoot around this morning at 6. The guys that are red shirt and had an individual workout at 515. And uh, there were multiple guys on the floor at 445. And so uh, I think that's rare. Uh, so that does relate to the skill work uh, of the coaches, but I think it m speaks to the diligence and how conscientious our guys are as workers. And I think that it is permeated throughout our program because, you know, it's just human nature, right? If, if you go to work at five, well, I don't want to come to work at seven. And it just kind of, it's trickled down to where our, we had 12 managers shagging balls this morning, and it's 5 a.m., you know? And that doesn't mean that we're gonna win. I, I'm kind of past the result of it and more about how are we working each day, but it speaks to the willingness of the kids to be diligent in their work. He could have shoot around at six o'clock. And then when he's talking about the red shirt guys, since those guys don't, aren't actually on the team, they usually have their own workouts throughout the year. They do their own individual stuff. Uh, just so they keep getting better so when they're done redshirting that they're ready to go. Uh, but he didn't, he didn't say, hey guys, show up at 445. He didn't say that. The guys just did it because that's how hardworking that team is. And there's a reason they're in the top 25 right now. There's a reason he's a very, very, very good coach and that he makes his players believe in that work ethic and then they take ownership of it. No one had to tell those guys to show up early. They just did it because they want to win. They want to succeed. And like you said, one of one guy said, yeah, it probably started this way. Hey, I think I'm going to go in and get some shots up early before the, uh, the red shirt guys get their work out in. And somebody else is like, oh, you're going? Oh, can I go too? And then word started spreading. Hey, hey, so-and-so is going early to get some shots up. Oh, I better go because I don't want him to take my minutes. I don't want him to take my spot. I want to play the entire game, coach, so so I, I, I better be there. I don't want to not be the only one to not show up to that. Again, it wasn't required. It wasn't required, but that's what they did uh, to work hard a little bit. So hopefully you think about that and what you can do. 
and yourself uh, to make sure you're the hardest working guy on this team. I want to cover this real quick because uh, I told you we would, but being tough with our communication. We have to be tough with our communication. It's super important that you learn how to communicate, not just for basketball purposes, but for everything, okay? But for everything in life. And it takes toughness to be a good communicator. It does. It takes toughness when you're dead tired, you can't, you can barely, you know, say ball, 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 and yet we're expecting you to communicate what's going on, screens, what you're doing, are you in help, what you're doing offensively. It's tough. It's tough. That's why communication is for the tough. If you don't communicate, that's a sign of weakness. It's a sign that you are weak. Not maybe physically, but mentally, that you are weak. And so what does it look like to be a tough communicator? All right, this is something I ran uh, with a program a few years ago, and I, we haven't done every single one of them, but I do want to touch on uh, this one in particular. So, Coach K, effective teamwork begins and ends with communication. You can't be a team. You're a group of five. You're a fist, as Coach K. will often say. And so if one guy doesn't t communicate and talk, well, guess what? Now it's a weak fist. There's no punching power with that fist. So your teamwork on the floor begins and ends with communication not from the sideline, on the floor, on the floor every time. If it takes me or coach saying stuff from the sideline all the time, we're gonna be in for a long season still. We're gonna be in for a long rest of the year. Hey, I'm about to give some advice. Yes. This is my rule of thumb in basketball. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I thought that was Michael Scott. Oh, <laughs> that's my philosophy of life, so. Good one, right? So keep shooting. All right, see ya. See ya. Sorry. <laughs> Very good philosophy. Miss 100% of the chances you don't that, that you have if you don't communicate. You, you miss out on every chance offensively uh, to get an open look if you don't communicate with your team. You miss a bunch of steals. Who knows how many steals and deflections you might miss out on because you didn't communicate on defense to get each other in the right position. Because you didn't communicate on defense, your teammate, uh, instead of getting the deflection, steal, and a pass ahead for you to score two points, missed it, and now the other team scored two points. So you miss a lot of opportunities, both opportunities that we know about and all the opportunities that we didn't even know it could happen because we didn't communicate. So effective teamwork begins and ends with it. So if we want to communicate, it's basically exchanging information, right? We're, we're someone's relaying something from one person or one individual, one device to something else, point A to point B. It could be verbally, it could be with words, it could be with symbols, it could be with hand signals. Communication is exchanging information, news or ideas, okay? And exchanging something important, okay? something important. So it's vital to toughness because you, you gotta have it. The, the tough messages often need to be said and if you aren't willing to communicate them, we're gonna be in for a lot of trouble. It's necessary in any relationship. Think about your teammates. For basketball, if we don't communicate, you're hurting your teammates, you're hurting our team, you're hurting our chances of winning probably. It affects your friends, your friends are just in life. If you don't communicate with them, I guarantee you they're not gonna be your friends for too much longer because they're gonna say, so-and-so shuts me out, they never talk to me, they never respond to my texts, they never you know, respond to my snap. We had the streak going and now we cut it off because I didn't communicate back to them. So it affects your friends and your friendships and what, not just on this team, and then it affects your future significant other. I'm telling you right now, learn to communicate. Learn to communicate, learn to over-communicate because that'll help you. Well, I mean, I'm looking at you. <laughs> so, so think about that. It really will. Communication is critical. Okay, it's critical for your success and our team success. It really is. I mean, this, you know, fine. And that's why we count on three because if we don't communicate together. The job doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. It can, it can look funny like that, but in all seriousness, the job does not get done if there's no communication. So think about that. Yeah, on the court stuff. I love Doc Rivers' quote, if you're not talking, you're not communicating, you are not playing defense. That's his philosophy. You can be moving all you want, your hands can be going up and down doing jumping jacks. If you are not talking, that means you're not playing defense. So think about that. Are you really playing defense then? How, how much have you played defense according to the Doc Rivers' uh, definition of defense? How much have you played defense this year? You don't have to answer that, but think about it. How much have you really played defense if the definition that Doc Rivers uses is talking and communicating? Ask yourself that question. Because that could be a huge indicator for saying, Coach, why, why am I not playing as much? Or why, why do we always change to a different defense when I'm in? Well, maybe the talk has a, has a 
big impact on that. Maybe the, the matchup we give you, we say, hey, we want you to guard this person. Maybe we gave you a lesser player in our minds because we don't think you're talking enough. We don't think you're willing to, to do that, to play defense. It all comes down to communication. It really does. So on the court, a team game re requires team communication. It's, and it's all about being connected. Communication connects us all. None of us are mind readers in here. I certainly am not. I cannot read anybody's mind in this room at all. So don't expect me to. We have to communicate. That's why I tell you things. That's why hopefully you tell me things. So that way we break the bond of silence there and we have some communication going back and forth. So you have to communicate. It's essential for the team. Uh, it, obviously, it takes trust and commitment. <coughs> Think about it. It does. You cannot just, you're not going to communicate with somebody if you don't trust them, right? If you don't believe in them. You're going to withhold information probably. So we have to build up trust within each other. To say, hey, I trust that I'm going to communicate to you. I need help here on this defense rotation, and you're going to help me. I'm going to trust that I'm going to say, hey, can you pick me up? Uh, I don't have a ride to practice on Saturday morning. Can you pick me up at, at this time? I'm going to trust that my communication gets to you, and that you will listen to it. So there's a trust factor in communication as well on a team. And then I firmly believe if you communicate, that diminishes the me empower, and empowers the we in a team. We talk. We get better. We focus on our whole group. If you don't talk, you're focusing on the me. I want to save my breath. I want to save my energy. I, I want to look cool in front of my my friends who are coming right to the game. You know, if you talk, if you communicate, that uplifts the we. It does. You are helping our team. So think about that as well. <coughs> right? um, NASA has a good thing because NASA. If you don't know anything about NASA, it's not just hey you build the entire spaceship. That's not how they do things at NASA. There's a department that is specifically set to make the door for the, for the for that hatch. There's another department that's set to do all the knobs and handles and buttons. There's another department for the engines. There's another department, and on and on and on and on and on. They're all building one spaceship. They're all building one spaceship with the one goal of that spaceship getting obviously into space, accomplishing its mission. You know, our mission is to get to that Saturday on February 9th. They will not launch that spaceship if they don't communicate. Like if the, the door people don't communicate with the, uh, the electronics people of how they're gonna navigate all the wires and devices into that ship, things are gonna go bad. I guarantee they have to communicate daily, if not hourly, when they're working on the, those missions to put together a spaceship that works. NASA cannot have that issue. So they over communicate. All of those departments work together. And so I think that's a great example of how we can work together as a team. Kevin Garnett, uh, when he does his off season conditioning, he sings to himself while he's running. He, he would always ran on the beach. That was his big thing. And he would sing to himself. Sometimes he said he'd sing some Beyonce or whatever. But he would sing to himself while he'd run. Why? Because he said, well, I'm going to be talking while I'm playing. So why would I not train? Prepare myself so that way I'm ready to go. So that's what he'd do. He'd talk to himself. He'd sing. He, uh, whatever song came on, he'd sing the lyrics to because he wanted to get himself used to running and not just a jog. I mean, running and also communicating because that was his big thing. If you know Kevin Garnett, if you watch any of his highlights, he was a huge communicator. He was talking on defense. He was talking on offense. He was talking whenever there was a timeout and he could talk junk to the other team. He was always talking. So he had to train his mouth in order to be able to be a good, good communicator. So think about that as well, all right? Here's two videos I want to show you. One guy giving some instruction about how communication can help you get more playing time, and then one from Coach K on effective communication. Both are really good and deliver a powerful message. So I want you to, to pay attention to these two clips right here. I don't know if you know this, this is an interesting stat I saw. A study conducted, it said that 69% of employees of this one study in this couple organizations that they studied said 69% said their organization had a lack of engagement. They had an engagement problem in their organization. It's incredible. That means that in many organizations and teams in the United States of America, there's a communication problem. I mean, that's what I think when I think of engagement. There's a communication problem somewhere in the team organization. That poses problems, poses big problems. You see, decisive communication means our communication has purpose behind it. It has a meaning, 
All right, so I thought that was very good for, for us to, to have as well. Tell, tell things I got for you, because I think this is super important. I think this is super, super important. Off the court, it's super important as well. It really is. If you, if you can't communicate with your teammates, your friends, your family outside of basketball, we're going to be in trouble. You have to learn to communicate with each other off the floor. Uh, that's where, hey, you shoot, shoot your, your teammate a text, hey, what's, what's going on? Send them a snap in the middle of the day. Hey, you ready for tonight, or how's it going? Yeah. All those little things, all those little pieces of communication add up over time and are huge. So you have to learn to communicate with each other off the court, too. Good teams do that. I mean, again, going back to Virginia Tech, I guarantee you they communicated off the floor, obviously, in order for them to say, hey, let's meet up at 445 in the morning to get some extra shots up. I guarantee that. So you have to understand that it's a 24-7 thing. It's not just we communicate from 3.30 to 5.30 for practices, or we communicate for an hour and 15 minutes on the game floor. That's far from how much we should be communicating. It's a 24-7 thing. And as freshmen, you have to understand that now, so that way the next four years of your career um, have some great impact and have some great success. If you don't take advantage of your off pull the floor communication, you're gonna be in trouble. You also need to do this word. You have two of these, one of this. Do less with the one mouth and do more with the two ears. If you're gonna be a good communicator, you also have to be a very, very, very good listener. So be willing to listen to your teammates as well. Listen to when Coach Bales has a comment for you. Listen to when uh, Coach or I have something for you. Listen. If you can be a good listener, you are gonna make it very far in life. You will, I guarantee you. Uh, because listening is a problem and a skill a lot of people do not have. So learn to be a better listener. Be an active listener. Don't just listen to respond. Listen to understand. Too many people do that. They listen to then just say, I want to put my two cents in. I, I have to remind myself of this all the time because I hear someone talk and I immediately want to cut them off and say, but what about this? Or here's my idea. Here's my thought. Listen with the intent to understand what the other person is saying, not just to respond. If you understand what, what somebody else is saying, now you can formulate your own opinion. You can always say what you think, but now we have a communication process going. We have a conversation. We aren't just going back and forth, and no one's listening, and we're just talking. Uh, so be a good listener. That's super important, okay? And remember your tone of communication. Your tone of communication is very important. That's what often people hear more than the words you say. If I say something in an anger, anger tone, you're gonna take it as coach pissed. But I can say the same thing in a more mild tone and get the point across to you that you really engage and you really listen to. So when you're talking to your teammates, make sure your tone of voice is good too. If your tone of voice sets your, your teammate off, they're not gonna listen to you. So make sure you're, how you're saying things, not just the words you're using, but how you're saying them is good as well and is, is impactful. Uh, so that's where you have to understand your teammates a little bit. And I yell at this one teammate, but I can't at this teammate. So I gotta have a different tone of communication. On defense, when I really wanna get on my, my teammate on his uh, not getting help, I know I gotta use this type of tone with him because otherwise he's gonna shut off. He's not gonna listen to me. Uh, so be effective with your tone of communication as well. That's something that you don't think of too much, all right? I'm gonna show you a clip from a great movie. Uh, great movie, Remember the Titans, talking about accountability. There has to be a communication accountability within our team. We already have those small groups, but you have to be accountable to, to each other. When your teammate says, hey, I need you to get the help, you better get the help. When, when you say, hey, I'm gonna be there at 3.30 to get some extra shots and rebound for you, or let's rebound for each other, you better be there. You better be accountable to your communication as well. Okay? If there isn't any accountability held within your, your communication, all talk is meaningless. I could get on you, I could say, hey, if we don't make these layups, we're gonna run until we puke. Well, if I don't back it up, if I don't hold up ourselves accountable, then all you're gonna say is coach is just talking and talking and talking, but his communication has no accountability. So make sure that the words you use have accountability behind it, uh, because that's gonna mean a huge deal, okay? Attitude reflect leadership. I like that because it's a conversation keeping guys accountable. All right. There was no coach there. There was no coach there. And if we watch 15 more seconds, you're going to see uh, C. 
see the guys get on each other, saying, hey, you know what, you aren't blocking for my guy. You better step up. And that's what it's going to take sometimes. Somebody's got to say, hey, I'm not waiting for coach or to get into this. I'm not waiting for coach to blow the whistle, stop the drill, call timeout. We're going to fix this. We're going to fix this on our own. It's got to take that. It's got to take that. It can't be a timeout. I will let you. You notice I don't use a ton of timeouts, and there's a reason for that. The reason being is that I want you to start learning how to figure some things out. This isn't life or death. This isn't a national championship game we're playing tonight. So I have no problem letting you try to own it and figure it out and hold each other accountable. I have no problem doing, doing that. Because that's what it's going to take in the long run for you guys to be successful as a group in whatever sport you play, basketball, football, baseball, cross country, whatever sport. You have to be held accountable. And then my favorite movie here, Lone Survivor, uh, you want to hear about communication? Just, just watch how they communicate. Watch, watch what they say to each other, how they command each other, how they help each other. Watch.